Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening, everybody. Welcome to Beer Talk. What is it? 278. Eight. Bloody hell. Like Beer Lab 8. <laughs> Turned uh, out pretty good. Yeah, as per usual, uh, go like and subscribe if you haven't yet already. If you want a guaranteed answer to your topic and or question, leave us a super chat. Or if you just want to help keep the, the lights on uh, and that sort of thing. Uh, also, uh, Skinny Play still has their uh what you want to call it there promo uh, win the winter collection uh going uh use the link and the code for 10 percent off uh i'll post that stuff in chat uh come join our discord uh eventually i'll get back to the uh to the uh what you want to call it a sub stack thing I, it's just been way too busy and um, if you, for some reason, hate YouTube, we're also on Twitch <laughs> for now. And uh, yeah, that's about it, I think. Did I miss anything? I don't think so. Uh... That's per usual. Am I <laughs> muted? Let's check if I'm muted first. No, I don't think you're <laughs> okay, muted. Good. Uh, good. Also, uh, uh, if for whatever reason we bug out, uh, I had a few fans in my PC randomly die that I... Uh, just managed to fix because I had some spares laying around, but I'm not sure how good the spares are. So uh, we bug out uh, or overheat or something of that nature. Uh, uh, then you know what it is because uh, I spent last night uh, all of a sudden like having uh, to replace a bunch of fans because they stopped reporting the RPM. That meant they just went full power, and then every time I powered my computer on or did anything, it rattled like crazy. I thought, like, wait, is the hard drive loose? It's like, no, there's like two fans that are broken for some reason, like the bearing went. Oh, yeah, that's not So good. you look at it and you see the fan, like, spinning like that, but doing that, right? Sleeps. <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> Can that potentially break off? Not really, right? They could, but it's more likely that they get stuck on something or chew a bunch of wires up or something like that. Yeah, then it's more damage. Or it just stops cooling properly and it overheats. Because well, I changed it around and uh, I have uh, uh, one of those giant all-in-one water coolers on there. And uh, by removing cables, I accidentally unplugged the pump. And within a minute or so, the CPU was at like 98C, 99C, which is overheating. True. Yeah, 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 of course. It can come off the freaking, you can melt the solar points. Yeah, so uh, I caught that quickly enough, but it didn't even want to boot when it was that hot. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Well, hopefully we'll hobble through this. Yeah, maybe it needs more RGB or something. And <laughs> I can bask in the blue glow. <laughs> <laughs> you need more LEDs in your, in your computer. <laughs> oh, boy. Two seconds. My cat is destroying something. All right, on. Well, I'm going to talk about the elephant in the room, more or less, which are the Viola baits that I borrowed from the store. It's our only demo pair. And I got to say, man, they are mind-blowingly good. Maybe it's because, you know, I'm in a small space, but essentially, you know, stereo pair, they're absolutely, in. they're insane. But they also have the Achilles heel of the Viola 28s. And that is the obviously ABL kicks in and the bass falls off the charts after like a 65 volume. So that being said, you know, if you don't really listen to it at that volume because it's pretty damn loud, but regular 50 or 40 volume that you normally would listen to music at, they're absolutely they're insane. And even the narrow and wide, like the, the, the experience of that, how it does the, the I guess the change is just the dynamics frequencies and stuff mm -hmm. but it uh, it does make a difference it does become more forgiving from the sweet spot versus just being a, a beaming in one direction like you know more or less the 28s and, and now 8s do I guess very 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 impressive speaker very nicely made and uh, does it sort of have the same bass bump 28s do or yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like they, that's their Achilles heel that they fall off a little bit once you start once you start cranking them. 
but it's not something that distorts anything, right? It's just you can no, but I mean, like, is it really presence. bass heavy? Is it? They're a little bit bass heavy on the beginning, but man, they are fucking gorgeous. They are. I would say that uh, on the on the stand itself, mm -hmm. it would be the same height, if not shorter. I think they would be shorter by the acoustic lens of a Beale Lab Three. Hmm. But the performance, I like that. You know, we had the pre-production model, so of course that the back uh, uh, was a little jiggly as far as the. You know, they are solid on the on those on those brackets now, and you know what? Listening to them for you know, in some good volumes as well. I didn't hear anything rattling as far as the back magnetic uh, clip clip on panels go. They're they're rock solid. The the speaker is rock solid. Absolutely, it's it's, it's great. Nothing moves. Nothing vibrates where it shouldn't. Very easy to set up. Like it's 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 almost scary how good and simple they make them do. And the, I, I say that with reserve, I guess. It's uh, not if you're a first-time BNO adopter owner, but if you are somebody where uh, uh, where if you had worked with BNO before or had your experience with your products before moving them about, then uh, yes, you'd be easy to set this up. Yes, I'm wearing gloves. God damn it, I always wear gloves. It's not my product, and even my shit I carry with gloves because I respect the I respect the brand and I respect the aluminium and and you know. I don't need my finger licking chicken grease fingers all over the the, the <laughs> nice finish, and I hate when people do that. Uh, well, I, what, not, what I was uh, sort of uh, getting at with the, if if the base is like twenty eight sort of like where it's quite a bit right, like you can always do minus one or minus two on the EQ and then uh, push the ABL out a bit further if you are yes. the person that listens to stuff that loud. Yeah. The grills are fantastic. I, I'm having a hard time wrap my head around the the price of them. To be very honest, it's I think that they are shooting for stars with it a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, compared to you know, yes, I understand maybe the manufacturing process is a little more complex and involved than uh, the BioLab or BioSound uh, theater grills. But you get more wood for your money, bro. Like <laughs> it's just you know, not here. Here you don't get you, you don't get enough wood. But uh, yeah, they are they are uh, they are funny. Also, I don't believe uh, that it's true that yes, you need to set the speakers up in stereo mode before you pair them to the before you pair them to the television. I had tried that with the pre-production models, and I had tried that. I'll put this one sideways so you can see it. Also, leaning back, all chilling like uh, I've tried it with the pre-production model. And uh, oh, what was I saying now? Yes, they wouldn't pair. Uh, and the same thing now, I, I honestly think it's the Mozart 3.2.3.2 software where uh, if they're paired stereo, wired wireless doesn't matter in between one another, only the primary speaker opens up for, for WISA. The second speaker appears on offline. So you cannot pair them together. And in the menu of the app, it only shows one BOLAP 8. So you have to technically you have to disconnect them or or separate the stereo pair, and then uh, after I separated them, I still had issues with the with the left channel, which was the secondary. So, you know, it was a little bit of a expected frustration of a setup uh, experience with it. Software update took no problem. Everything else was no problem. And Did then they I set do them up the software the update normally while paired. Or was that a separate? I didn't do that because I, as soon as the speaker setup comes on, it tells you, you know, you don't want to update the software or not. So I just said install the software. And while I did the first speaker, you know, put it on the stand and whatnot, I, I took out the second one, prepared it, a lot, uh, plugged it in, and then I did them both. And then I paired the first one that finished the update with the second one that came out of the box and finished the update. And then I listened to them, which was a goofy picture that it almost looks like something that you put together in the, in the Microsoft Paint when they're sitting in my uh, on my kitchen table when I was setting them up. <laughs> so I listened to them over there, and I was pretty surprised. Man, the imaging and the clarity is unprecedented, like unprecedented. Very, very, very clean speaker. Very clean sounding speaker. I mean, it's so, another ten years of tech versus 17. exactly. So, so. 
you see in the background by the, I guess, right hand side speaker, there's a white side re uh, receiver. So I also had done the experiment that uh, uh, Steve was talking about on his video regarding the 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 the, the guitar string theory, right? Mm. And bro, he wasn't wrong at all. I had taken uh, I had taken uh, the the BioLab 11 that I have, and I have no power here, so I took the Milwaukee. It's 175 watt power supply mm -hmm. from a M18 battery. It works no problem with the BLF 11, man. And I was watching <laughs> some some serious good movies. I tuned it together with the BLF 11 is immediately behind the couch, literally 50 centimeters from what I measured from my head. The measurement result comes at 3.46 meters away from the listening position. I don't understand how that happens still with the subwoofers on the on the calibration, but uh, I had to change a little bit of, on the redirection levels i finally understood what the redirection levels do because mm -hmm. they basically move how much pace you want from each speaker like if you put it to zero db then it doesn't redirect anything but i just kind of wonder where is it redirecting it to when you also redirect from the subwoofers that you can do that same right but i managed to tune it that like the bass is just sick man because it carries perfectly throughout the, the floor here or throughout the room and these are insane as front channels. Your neighbors must be so happy. <laughs> I don't have any right now. That's the cool part. I have no neighbor on that side and no neighbor on the back side. So I was listening yesterday. I watched a whole bunch of different movies, uh, obviously. Uh, deep water uh, testing. And then, <laughs> and then uh, very. I was very impressed, man. I'm actually, for the distance that I am from the 18s as readers or surrounds, it was very impressive what this was performing with uh, whatever this pixie dust happens inside the theater with the magic of sound. It was unbelievable, man. It was unbelievable. I was very impressed by the BLAB 8. Very, very. Imp I'm still impressed by them. Again, it's not something that, in my opinion, what I would do if I was B&O, I would never market them as an individual set as an individual speaker, because to me, that's a very much of a balance killer in a way, not performance wise, but ability wise, because if you take one with the cloth, oh, fuck, I'll take another one and maybe in two, three months when I can recover a little bit financially. Now you have a stereo set that's able to connect to your theater if you have one or bought one or, or you're planning on buying one later, where with the balance, you kind of don't have that option unless they come out with that wireless uh, or Wi-Fi surround, if that ever, you know, whatever you can call it. Let's hope they do, but... I mean, to me, it looks nicer than a balance. Though a balance oh, very is much not, so. not ugly, it's just unremarkable. Balance is very subdued design. It's something that it's meant to be not noticed really at all. Well, the eights aren't, like, super... In well, they're face. not they're not in your face, but they're definitely something you don't miss in the room. Maybe if they're all black, you still don't. Yeah, I, I would have a hard time missing these in the room, especially if you have them on the floor stands when they stand a little more prouder. But uh, they are they any, are beautiful. Any idea when the Walmart wall mounts are out? Like next year somewhere, right? Yeah, yeah. We don't have the we don't have we have the, the pricing is more or less the same as the uh what the heck is it they come out in. Ceiling mounts and wall mounts are the same price, and then uh, you have the, the the floor stands, which are the most expensive, and then you have the table stands, which are presented here. That so far we have. I kind of like the table stands personally. Table stands are very cute, man, and and man, I gotta give them the way that they had put together everything as far as like you know accessibility to cables and and ease of setup and putting it together. I'm very very impressed. Very very impressed. So, yeah, the ceiling mounts are going to come out in a while. But uh, I think that also with those uh, uh, mountability options, I think the B&O really has given uh, STB brackets a run for their money as far as what do you complement design to that. You know, like you could probably make some adapters to the old BLAB 3 floor stands type of thing. Uh, but I don't see much more, uh, you know, because... Maybe those BioLab 3 ceiling mounts, right, where they came out from the top and hugged around the speaker to the bottom. 
maybe that would be something that they could come up with. But if BNO already has that, essentially, then what's there to do for them? Right. I mean, maybe why it's late is because they do the production. Who knows? So. Ceiling mounts are cancelled. Are you in a cancel culture, Malik? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> I don't think they're canceled. I think they're just postponed in production for some reason. But uh, I think that the reason might be that wishbone assembly and how to have how to hold them, you know, more securely. Maybe I don't know. But the wishbone is definitely better made than uh, the pre-production model that we have. I have to say that also, because we had, you know, the like I said, the pre-production model. So they were put together just to show they were functional. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing that I have negative to say about them is they don't communicate narrow and wide mode other than changing it from the app and you can do that Wait, while the they are the in WISA, not when they're connected to the theater so you can't tell so if you yeah. have like I, I set them tuned as a stereo mode right but yeah. it, I kind of cheated with the stereo because I did uh, I did front, right, and left subwoofer center, basically, or front sub and, and right sub on the, on the theater. And then I had the left and right channels as the lab eight. And then I did the string theory and I put the lab 11 as subwoofer center. Mm -hmm. And obviously it's an insane, like the, the, it's a very rich experience. Very, very rich experience in sound. Very clean. I'm surprised how flipping clean those things are. It must be the room compensation, probably. It, it is, a lot of man. It. it is, but it's just such... It's such a different sound. Like, it's such a different sound. Now, with the theater, when you even when you put it together with the theater, and because the, obviously theater goes... I don't know how far these go up. I'm, I'm maybe, what, 2,000 hertz? I don't know how much that sweep compensates for in each speaker. I know the the theater does it to ten thousand. Maybe they do it now to ten thousand too. Yeah, which as well. I don't know. It's insane of a difference. And uh, yeah, man, it sounds it sounds absolutely spot on with the theater, spot on. Only thing that I maybe would have changed, or I hope that that comes out later in life, because they're not in my eyes. They're more or less to complement the 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 look of a speaker like Biolab Twenty Eight or a Biosound 2 per se with the finish, then they are to complement the look of a, a diamond polished aluminum on the Biosound theater. And I would like to have those in polished aluminum, you know what I mean? The mm -hmm. sides, like that would look, yes, it would have been more reflective, but now, I'm, son of a bitch, I have the Lab 11 in black, I'm, 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 and I looked on, on ROS, it's a, apparently the, the, sh the silver shells are still available, so I'm going to buy, I'm going to buy silver shells to match it with the theater, because they, yeah, that sub is staying where it is, man, even if I have to power it off the battery for the time being on the movies. And I was actually surprised how low power consumption the Lab 11 has, even, you know, pumping it all night long. I went one notch down on my M18 12.0 battery. Uh, Chava asks, how do they compare to stereo alone versus theater involved, i.e. 18s versus 8s probably with theater compared to 8s? Yes, the experience is the same. They do, the theater does help them a lot. It corrects a lot. It unlocks, I guess, more bass to them in a certain ways. Mm -hmm. But they do, they do also fall into the shorts of the bass response at the higher volumes, of course. ABL is much more intelligent now. It gives you that fake bass feel, like it just goes more mid rangey, right? Because it yeah. just can't produce what it needs to. But uh, yes, there is a difference acoustically between having them standalone stereo paired on their own versus having, excuse me, the theater being a part of it. Now, if the theater is acoustically also part of it, then it's a completely different experience. They're much more richer in bass. Uh, what I'm going to do this evening, because I still have them for tonight, tomorrow the store's closed, but I'm going to be busy, so I'm not going to have much time to play tomorrow night. But what I would like to do is just to do a set up a triangle like, you know, I have with the 18s, but I need to just, just put the 8s where the, you know, on the counter here and one, I'll move a chair 
take that pedestal from from the uh, the foyer that I have for my keys on, just to stand them up to see what they what they are gonna sound like. Uh, but uh, man, I am very surprised. They're very well. They're very well complementary to the theater acoustically and uh, and also the look wise, very well. Yeah, it's nice when everything in sort of sound signature matches. Yeah, it, and 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 also the harmony of the design, right? No pun intended. Sorry, we don't sell you <laughs> no more because you got killed by the theater. <laughs> but uh, no, they are they are absolutely gorgeous speaker, and it's everything that I was hoping for. Maybe not the design and look wise, right? Because that's also the 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 beauty of the the B and O surprise, where you you know everybody has their somewhat of an idea of what the next speaker will look like till they you know see it for the first time it's like fuck that's nothing what i would have imagined like and uh and this is uh and this is where it is uh chaba i didn't really play much with the stereo paired balances uh they sound good but to me what uh what, what my experience or short experience that i had with it was uh this is more cleaner it's much more refined of a sound in uh in uh in the bio lab eight so far that i've been obviously i've only had them for a few hours i guess yesterday and uh and how are they versus 18 it's very good question stefan uh i don't know how to answer that to not make you feel bad or not make myself feel bad but uh, uh they are very 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 on par with the 18s uh, in wide mode once you put them to narrow the accuracy completely steamrolls the 18s that's my personal opinion of from listening to them also but i don't 18s think are kind of permanently wide anyway well that's it right but 18s without the help of the theater by the way mm -hmm. will not have the same bad in my opinion they do not have the same bass response on their own versus what the theater does to them when mm -hmm. they're playing. Yes. Therefore, you know, eights are better in that way. They're a little more compact. Uh, a bit more dynamic. They're digital. They're fully digital. Yes, the eighteens are also digital, but they're they're not digital they're in a smart digital. way. <laughs> they're dumb digital. They're you know they're like my car. I still have GPS, but it don't connect to shit. So. It's it's this versus, you know, 2012 to 2023, you know, there's 11 years of, of progress. It's a very hard to compete in that uh, or within that realm. It's the same thing, you know, some people still love their Biolab 5s, which, you know, all the power to you. But if you have come from something that is like 50s and then you listen to the 5s, you're like, hmm. Like these are just missing all this extra sauce and glitter and, and sparkle and whatever else you want to call it, the pizzazz, uh, acoustically. So yeah, the fives are great for when you're sort of there somewhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but now, like you know, even though the the B and O, in my opinion, or their opinion, and everybody else's opinion, was never considered an audiophile uh, company per se. Mm -hmm. I think with the introduction of the 90s and then disseminating that tech lower down to more affordable products per se uh, or throughout their portfolio, uh, it's they are in that level now, I think, especially with the 50s and 90s. And, you know, maybe not the 28s, but the 28s would be something that if I were to do the 28s now, I would probably consider doing two pairs of eights and a 19. That's always kind of the question, right? Like you can do 90s or you can do t two sets of 50s and a theater. Uh, if you want 50s, you can do two sets of 28s and a theater and a panel and a set of 17s or potentially even 8s, depending on the cost now of 50s. I but if you want 28s, you can do two sets of 8s. We have a, we have a few clients now uh, that have the triangle, obviously. Uh, Stefan, you don't count because you went for the four speakers now, so you're out, <laughs> of that, you're out of that game. But you're not out of the game of my suggestion that I had experimented with right now, which is taking the Lab 19 and moving it to the back speakers. Help the rear 18s with the sub, put it in the center, 
because there's enough base in the is in a theater more or less to handle the front with the set of 18s mm-hmm. but if you move that 19 to the back that that guitar string throughout the whole room the that effect is unfucking believable yeah it's good it's unbelievable like i because i had the 18 19 uh, i mean sorry 19 the 11 which is not the most powerful of the subs that they had in their portfolio right it's like a little vanilla you know it's a little latte it's not a full coffee but you put this down here it really didn't make any difference but as soon as i moved it aligned with the with the 18s in the center behind the couch the the, the experience and the bass performance was absolutely amazing because it evens out the theater and the theater then don't have to throw that bass so much to a certain position where the mic has acoustically t- tuned for, right? Mm-hmm. Where those frequencies are higher further down because, you know, the amplitudinal waves and so forth. So with the 11 or if you put a 19 in the back, obviously 19 can let you go further up the, the, the volume scale. But uh, I would uh, I would do that. I would try to whoever has the, the the theater sub and 18s in the back set up just for the shits and the giggles. Take the pila, take the grill off, plug in the microphone, move this up to the back, and run a run a separate speaker yeah, for every set. Run it on wise if you want to test it. Make mm-hmm. a difference. You know what? I also found that that's okay. This is more or less a little bit of a compliment to the app developers because I was never able to do that in the beginning. It was always crash and fuck up. I was able to just edit my sofa preset with extra lab eights as fronts. And all I had to do is just rerun the calibration and it was fun and happy. Which back oh, in the day, it would always... That's an improvement. Yeah. Yes. So you don't have to delete all your speaker presets and then recreate them all from scratch. You can just edit certain ones by adding more speakers and then just retuning, running the calibration soft uh, 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 sweep on, on all of them. And now you have two more speakers at the front. Now I am going to try and see how that would work with deleting them on Monday. If I have to delete the entire speaker preset or, or listening position, as they call it, and fix the damn terminology already in the Bio Remote one, for God's sakes, guys, this is ridiculous. I call it a speaker. It's a listening preset. Just call it something that makes sense. Anyhow, <laughs> I digress <laughs> because I wasn't able to remove a 19 in the shop yesterday or day before yesterday. No, yesterday I wasn't at work. I was at work Saturday. Uh, I wasn't able to remove the 19 from the, from the speaker position while it was turned on, even if I had to the other position. And when I went uh, to connected speakers and try to remove the 19 from the connected speakers, it would crash the app for like five minutes. I just had white screen and then they always showed up and then I come back to the app and now I'm missing 118. I'm like, no, I didn't delete the 18, bro. I deleted the 19. What the hell's happening? Then I went remote access to our own app through my phone and on my phone, all five speakers show up 18 and two pair and, and two pairs of nine, uh, two pairs of 18s and a 19. So then I was like, you know what? I'll, act. I'll fucking research your bitch ass. And I just factory the, the theater and then, yeah, it let go of the speakers. Yeah. It was weird. No, uh, we've always liked the theater. It's just the stability wasn't always there. And or it was so quirky and so different that there's, especially living with Bio Visions for the last, what, two decades or whatever. It, mm-hmm. it seems like it's different just to be different. Because a lot of things didn't need to necessarily be different. Just cha- changing of nomenclature for some reason. Like, it's 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 a bit I don't know it's a bit strange sometimes, <laughs> and it was also but, a bit buggy. I mean, uh, fortunately, it's getting better, but it is getting better. Uh, I had a weird bug now. I don't know if anybody else has come across this, but this started happening Friday. Uh, I did a setup with a set of fifties and a theater on the wall with a, like a, I don't know. It just went under this huge 130 inch projector screen. And uh, I, it was probably one of the most heartwarming uh, installs that I've had in a while. The dude was so excited for the 50s, bro. Fucking kissing him and shit. Like, bro, man, I got to wipe all that off. Like, come on. <laughs> 
it was it was, it was he was so stoked and he just couldn't wait and you know then he loads the app while i'm tuning him like no right and the app fucked up so i had to retune it again but once i tuned the speakers then i tuned them with the theater and then he played robin williams angels or bobby williams whatever mm -hmm. Sound great. I'm like, no, I don't listen, man. Let's play something that I know so I can tune them properly and go to the EQs and just mess, mess a bit with uh, with the sound and did that for a bit. And the dude was uh, very, very happy. But then I uh, had to reboot the theater for this reason that we could not get. I thought it was because I was on my my account, which I understandably, if I'm on my phone, borrowing access control to your account i don't really have access to your deezer mm -hmm. sometimes this bug allows for it sometimes i have my deezer account linked with your account for some reason and i can play the music but it could not it would not turn on the deezer bro you select the song it says unable to play i'm like what the fuck so we rebooted it and theater comes back go back to the app nothing like it just wouldn't play so I'm like seven i don't know what take the remote i took the remote press music go to deezer turn on the deezer it starts playing a song that we selected before we rebooted it so like fucking six songs ago right <laughs> but okay at least it's playing now so let's play with that and you know then we did a whole bunch of stuff selected different tracks blah 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 started working no problem it came back it came back yesterday it's i'm driving alive. to <laughs> yeah, but like what that was inexplicable uh, circumstance or happenstance because I, I didn't know what the fuck. Like, why? There's no rhyme and reason for you not to work. And then just mysteriously just turns on, blah, blah, blah. So there we go. Good. And yesterday I get a phone call driving home from the shop that uh, it's like, Willie, I can't, I don't know what the fuck. Could I like set on the remote and screw something up because I can't get teaser? I'm like, what do you mean you can't get teaser? Like, it doesn't show up on my remote control. So I told him, you know, like, press OK, five seconds, hold, right? Push to home, hold for five seconds, reboot the remote. Didn't work because he probably didn't hold it properly. I'm like, just, I'm like, unplug the fucking theater, right? Hmm. He unplugs the theater, plugs it back in. And then, uh, obviously, like, it takes a while and people don't have patience for that, right? Because the remote, apparently, you know, it takes a little bit. Like, oh, the coffee breaks over. I have to go to work now. So that, and then... It, it pairs and it populates the list on the TV or music, whatever, from the theater. And I don't know, like 15 minutes later, it texted me like it just came back on mysteriously. Everything's back on. Yeah, so. I couldn't pay for Deezer either Friday and Saturday. So maybe it was a Deezer. Maybe Saturday it was season. an internal issue. Yeah, Th that could damn well be. But uh, I didn't have the problem. Well, I guess... Fuck, I didn't really play much with anything. Because yesterday, uh, I mean, on Friday night, I came home, it was a Christmas party. So I came home like 10 o'clock, whatever. <laughs> then we just Good times. watched. Then we just watched, uh, I think we watched a movie. But I didn't have the AIDS. And then Saturday, yesterday, I picked up the AIDS. And I, that's when I started listening to it at night. But I didn't have a problem selecting tracks or anything. It just worked. Maybe it was past the... The, the the whatever server issue they had or whatnot but uh is it me or is are like b and o small b and o speakers always a little bit extra magic like 17s which are arguably sounding wise better than 18s or like threes which are tiny but sound enormous like even the small uh, i find lab eights now brain damagingly good like because when you're looking at them and you and you sit there like when you close your eyes they sound not just like a, a, a larger speaker, but the accuracy in them now is, is substantially better. And I understand, like, in audio files, and, eh, there's a lot of processing. Well, fuck you. I want the processing before I have to go put, like, polyurethane pads in the corners to trap the bass and, and, <laughs> and, and, and put my carpets down and put the wires on the styrofoam cone so they don't conduct, you know, uh, static electricity from me walking around my slippers on the floor. I don't need any of that nonsense, bro. I Personally, just, I want the processing to be unnoticeable. It's not noticeable. Yeah, so like, if it's it, unnoticeable, it's, what do you care? I think, like, you, you can tell that it's noticeable 
if you if you do what I did when I when I just play them, and then I ran the uh, room compensation on them, then it's noticeable. But it's noticeable not in a bad way. It's noticeable in a way that like wow, like that's what they are supposed to sound like essentially. Like that's what Jeff Martin was listening to essentially is what it is. So. You should also think about bringing me some cigars, Stefan. <laughs> Please. Uh, depending on where you are in Florida, come by. If you want to listen to an A5. Fuck, sit him in front of the 50s. I mean, this came in. I know, I beat you to it, but it looks beautiful, I have to say. It's, yeah, it's, but this I one is it mine. It's the nicest, I know. <laughs> I just don't have anywhere to put them, man. I have a level that sits in the box. Well, Good. like I said, uh, I don't know, many, many weeks ago, uh, I was sort of with re redoing the whole house, right? It's sort of like I can put like the. the uh, the Celestials or whatever in my like roof outside for uh, uh, I'm in Tampa by the way for, for with the pool and have music outside that way but mm. then you need a core and then you need a remote and then and it's, it's all... outside so you drop the remote it's, that's damaged hard because yeah. it will happen or, or you get like stick an essence on the wall but essences are becoming rare so they're hard to replace uh it's it's one of these things where it's like I'd rather have this because I can put this in any room of the house. Yeah. And it's it's very, very nice. No, that space aluminium is awesome. I wonder if they're gonna come up with more of those uh uh more of those uh, variants on any other product. But I mean, this was one of the few speakers. I, I pulled it out the box, and uh, the missus is used to quite a lot of shenanigans, right? Mm -hmm. But this is one of the few speakers where I pulled it out the plastic and immediately was like, ooh, ah. <laughs> it's worth the premium. Like, she sure. had seen the pictures, and it's just sort of like, yeah. yeah, that's nice. I like it. Yeah. And then in, in real life, it was like, ooh. <laughs> no, it looks very nice in flesh. I also love the aluminium handle. That's just, you know, that's very, very Biosystem 10 classic homage. I mean, actually, the camera doesn't do it justice at nowhere all. Nowhere near, nowhere near. It does less for it than better. But I understand now those uh, dots that are not aluminium on the sides. Yeah, it's it's a bit of a Faraday cage otherwise. Also, this strip in the camera is really noticeable when in real life you can't really tell. No, I mean, it's, it's very a slightly hard different shade, but I can't yeah. really tell the difference. If anything, the only re way I can think I can tell is that the dots are slightly smaller. But I'll have That's to. That's just optical illusion, more or less, bro. I'll have to get like a micrometer out. No, I, I'm pretty sure they are actually slightly smaller. We're talking like. Uh, the the aluminium dots are like four mil, I want to say, mm. and the uh, the other ones are like three, two and a half, something like that. Maybe that has to be because of those antenna placements. Yeah, that they but, that they require. But again, you like from here, like holding it out like this, I can't tell anymore. I mm. have to like be up here to see. Can my A5 connect to the TV or can the A5? Uh, well, here's the yes and here's the no. Simply no and yes would be if you have an Apple TV that you watch on your panel, then you can airplay the sound into your speaker. Mm. So that's the only way to go about it if you want it. But then... It becomes more of, I don't, it's not, it's a hassle. It's not like, you know, you got to shovel the driveway for 20 minutes with, you know, half a foot of snow, but it's still not something that it's just like you turn it on and you still have to be conscious of the fact, okay, well, no, I have to airplay into that in order for this to be listening to, but it's doable in a way. That would be the only way. Uh, you can't put an, an RCA connector out or like headphone jack out of the TV into the input of the, the, 
Mm, paired, that's a good question. But if you can airplay into them paired, I have no issue believing that the that the you know airplaying sound from TV would be would works as well. Should. So. But it's uh, depending on what software the Apple TV is on. It can be a bit of a faff in that you have to establish that airplay connection every time. Yes, of course. So it's a six of one, half dozen the other, but it's not the full basket. No. I mean, if uh, coming to the sound of this, it sounds very good. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. a Biosan 2 still kicks its ass because it's it's not the same, but this is much more of an omni speaker than a Biosan 2 is. Yeah, uh, but this will keep playing when you can when you unplug it from power where Biosan 2 is done for. So that's also an advantage. Yeah, I mean, the battery on this is crazy. Like, at, at a sort of normal outside where you don't have to start shouting to one another and it's on, like, a, a six-person table, according to the battery indicator, which in my experience is quite accurate, uh, from full, it's it's about 19 and a half, 20 hours of play, which is insane. <laughs> Yeah, when I had it home, I, I played with it for a while. We had it playing for quite some time. And it was, I think, over the whole weekend that I had it home, from 100 that I took it out of the shop, it was like 98% when I took it out. I think I came back with not even not even 57 burned through, or 57 left. Also, it's, yeah, it's a Mozart product. It's fully fledged. It has Wi-Fi and everything. It's not just a Bluetooth speaker. Yes. That's the death of Biolet 20, in my opinion. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the Biolet 20 is is nice, but it's quite aggressive on the bass, and it mm. has a sort of, I don't know, beat by b &O sound, if that makes sense. This is much, much more refined. Yes. It's, it's, it's a lot uh, cleaner. It's... Uh, there's room compensation in it. Uh, you can pair it to anything else in the house, like your theater or whatever. Uh, you can use it as a full-on multi-room speaker that you can carry places. If anything, it's equivalent to Biosound 1. Or a level, maybe. It but sounds much better than a level, though. I have sure. got to say that. Absolutely. I have got to say that, which sounds much better than the level. But I mean, uh, yeah, it's it's just a portable bio lab, if anything. Mm -hmm. So uh, I I I don't have a second one. Sorry. <laughs> so I, I, but I'm pretty sure the EQ and everything works paired because it's essentially just a bio lab. Yeah, I'd never tried playing that. I, that I forgot to do. I played with the tone, didn't play with the tone control on the bio lab eight when I had them paired because that answer more likely would be the same for the bio lab. Or Biosound A5. They're all yeah, running I mean, on the it, same platform. It works on 28, so I have no uh, reason to believe it wouldn't work on an A5. Mm -hmm. It's... Uh, I mean, the only thing I would want to change about it, really, is that uh, I'm so certain I saw a toggle in the setup where... Uh, you could set the, uh, the standard is that if you don't use it for 90 minutes, it's auto powers off and you could undo that. But I can't find it in the menu anywhere. So the only thing I would wish to change about it is that if it's on the charger, that it never goes off. Like if it's on battery, fine, whatever. But if you leave it, I don't know, kitchen sink somewhere around there and it's on the charger that it is a permanent uh on multi-room it speaker. does turn off yes because level doesn't well mine did may have to reset it again <laughs> or maybe they see some maybe they inadvertently or un unconsciously even change that in the software updates because i remember when well this is now a year ago when i lived uh, downstairs in that apartment i first moved to montreal and I had level, I had timers set up on it. Maybe that was the workaround. I had wake up timers that every, like at 6.30 in the morning, it just turned on the radio and it fucking did. And it was off the all night. It was obviously the knob was plugged in, so it was powered, but it never shut off. 
Uh, so that's something that I might have to try and see. But I've had level, actually, coincidentally, speaking of that, I did try it the other day. I had the level out of the box for some reason. I was playing around with it. And uh, I had it plugged in for a few days during a week here and it never shut off. Hmm. So I don't know if that's just something that is a. Uh, it's still a Mozart platform, so I don't understand where the bloody limitation comes from. Or is it just something that they inherently put in there that they meant to have it only on the if the battery is on only, but for some reason somewhere in the code or a check mark was forgotten to just not do that when it's plugged in. That's that's my assumption of it. Gerald says A5 has the base. I mean, in my recollection of Abila 20, Abila 20 has more base than this, but that's yeah. uh, Coffee. obviously with room compensation on, yes. on the A5. Where the, the like I said, the, the, the Biolit is a sort of beat by B&O kind of product. And I like it for what it is. It's just for that, if I could change anything, it would be a bigger battery. Yeah, it's a very small battery inside the Beolet 20. So, uh, they're all the same batteries on in everywhere. I mean, the, the base on the A5, I would say, is present, but it's not overdone in any sense. No, no. I mean, it, it sounds a bit untuned, unroom compensated. It sounds a bit odd because it is kind of out of whack from the factory. Yes. And uh, I mean, the first time I heard it is, God, it's so long ago now. Uh, and the software wasn't ready at all. <laughs> and you really couldn't go over volume, uh, volume 40 because it would go all out of whack. <laughs> yeah, I remember those days too. Let me mute myself for a second here. But it sounds great. I'm wondering what the uh, feature is going to uh, do once they enable it, that, that cell phone tracking deal with the mm -hmm. uh, continuous sweet spot, I guess, or whatever they call it. I will never, ever use that because that's just going to lead to problems. <laughs> that's my only worry, that if people have it inadvertently set on and they forget that they have it on and they move away or put the phone on the charger... And all of a sudden, they're going to be calling the stores like, hey, man, I don't know what happened, but my speaker, every time I put my phone on the charger, starts sounding awful. Yeah, so. this is what I mean. It's fully zoomed in. It's it Maybe it's optical. I don't think it it's is. It's an op optical illusion, man. It looks the same. They look the same. Let's take a poll on it. <laughs> uh. All the holes. But... Uh, yeah, man, this was a pain in the ass to manufacture. Like a serious pain in the ass to manufacture. But they're pushing it. They're pushing the limits of what they can do. I like it. I'm going with, I'm not going to say what yet. Uh, Max, uh, what about the infrared camera on the front of something like a feature that a theater to ex to track where people are instead of tracking phone? I don't think that I would appreciate anything tracking me anywhere, man. Honestly, I'd rather go through the bullshit exercise of running around with the microphone like a dweeb around my house to set hundred presets than having this thing mod uh, really, you know. And quite honestly, how really like is it that important? When you're doing dishes and shit, like, is it really that important that it tracks where you are when you're sitting there? Your sinks go in, you're, you got stuff jangling, dangling. I would say it's sonically impossible. You can uh, sort of make it appear, but it will never be. And if wear headphones at that point. Yeah. And don't bother nobody either. <sighs> So, I mean, it is kind of the light sensor on the theater you can use for like uh, uh, home automation stuff. So that's yeah. kind of cool. It can trigger stuff. Like, was it has IO can see that it picks something up in front of it? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, same for the halo. So if you walk past, like your lights go on or off or whatever. Mm. Yeah, that'd be cool. But you know what? Some of those things, I don't know. There is, I haven't really had a chance to play with the Bio Living Intelligence as of lately. But there is, a, there's not as much on it now as it is for what it used to be, especially, you know, modifying stuff on the Bio Remote one and so on. But I, like I said, I haven't played with it. So I'm not going to, I'm going to refrain from commenting on it. I haven't had time. But I do need to fucking do it. I need to get the Bio Living Intelligence out. And uh, and go from there. Yeah, the, I mean the whole fluid sweet spot. It doesn't interest me one bit. No. Like if you, like you said, right? Like if you're going to be doing that many other things, it's you're not active listening anyway. Yeah. Like if you do. Or are you doing dishes like, ooh, I'm so in the, in the sweet spot? <laughs> mm. Like, I doubt it. It's an interesting point, Gerald McMullen says, wireless headphones are Bluetooth. Yeah, of course they are. But come back because they have a Wi-Fi option. I think Wi-Fi option would be a nice idea to headphones so you can airplay directly into them in lossless. Because the Bluetooth is still a lossy uh, uh, transmission in a way. But if you could have, I just don't know if I would want to have two fucking or one Wi-Fi antenna like so close to my head. I'm not sure to you're allowed to. to. <laughs> and yeah, maybe that's too that you're not might, might not be allowed to do that. Sorry, right, cat is bringing me her toy because because <laughs> that's like... just what it is. <laughs> no, she loves to play fetch. <laughs> like my but, cat yeah. is a dog technically. She, she has a toy that she brings to me when it's playtime, and I start throwing it, and it's. It's an endless thing. <laughs> nice. But I don't know. I, I, For me, even tracking like whatever through the Apple Watch, if it was possible, obviously, I don't think it is because of whatever chip it doesn't have. I, I don't know. I don't know if I would appreciate that functionality, uh, not just to the fullest, but in any way, to be honest. Like, it may be cool for some, you know, a, a party trick type of thing, right? Yeah. But that's about all there is to that. Like, I just don't, you know, because then you still have to go to the app and turn it off if you want to put your phone on the charger, right? What if you put your phone on one of the A5's charger? <laughs> it thinks the sweet spot is right there. <laughs> right? So, you know, A5's are selling very well, actually. Uh it's funny how there are certain products that people gravitate to in different, uh, I guess even I would say provinces per se, like, you know, and colors, like there was completely different assortment of things that we used to sell in, in, uh, in Calgary that was sold here. But here in Montreal, I see we sell a lot of theaters with the 18s and there is a lot of A5s. I think we had, I don't even remember. I think we had 30 of them on order, and I think there's two downstairs left. So they are selling very well. Obviously, the uh, the spaced aluminium, we only got two of them, I think, three days ago, last week. But the wood sells pretty well. Uh, who was it? I think it was uh, Loritz who said, should they make this for Biolab 8 as a front cover? That'd be very interesting, but I think it's too dense for the sound to come through properly in the way that they need it. But they can also tune around it, right? Just like they did with this floor. Like yeah, the... or they make the spacing more like 50s, maybe widen it out mm -hmm. a bit. But something similar, right? Like where it's cohesive, because this is rather gorgeous. Oh, dude, it looks sweet in person. It just like the, the web camera doesn't do any justice to it. No. Uh... I'm also working with very shitty light in here still. Yeah, yeah, I can see it. But yeah, it's a, it's a very, very nice finish. Well, they do have, what, uh, two more grill options that they can go with for the, or two more material options that they can go with for the Biolab 8s, right? Yeah. So, is it two or three? I think three. No, two. Because the the cloth has no magnet, wood has one magnet, then they can do another material that it would have a magnet on the other side, 
and then they can have a third one which has two magnets. So you can have two more different materials on the Biolab 8 as a front front drill, which in my opinion would be probably just aluminium and you know, you can't really go with anything else. Like you covered all the grills that you have as, as in your disposition, I guess, cause, or disposal. You have your cloth, your wood, or and your uh, and your metals. If you're gonna go with a metal of some sort, but if they were going with a metal grill, then they would have to go with some sort of a solution for the theater to 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 complement it. Or maybe. you know, maybe find out what the bespoke program would cost to make a spaced aluminium grill for the theater. Would it almost be easier to have the top fabric be an aluminium mesh of some sort than the the front? On the theater? Yes. I don't know. I think it would look awkward. I think it would be just too distracting from the TV reflection. I mean, I also have a feeling that if you make the whole front aluminium, essentially, that's also going to be awkward. So if you have more like aluminium, aluminium, and then like black cloth on the front, that could look quite good. But if they did the lamellas in, let's say, polished anthracite, that would look good. Yes, I think so. Silver and black, it would just look sweet. But I don't know. The gray melange is a very subdued and neutral color. I like it because you can't really see the dust on it, which is very forgiving. And, and, you know, I dust my theater quite often because this apartment, believe it or not, is very, very dusty. I don't know why. And where the You live in a city and it's not airtight. No, it's not airtight at all, man. Like I had constant positive pressure blowing garbage and crap and cancer in my fucking through the front door. So yeah, Maybe I have get to get uh, tighter AC filters or something. Dude, I'm not investing in this thing at all, man. I'm hoping to be gone next year. So, but for now, I think just KCBR stick says with cats, the uh, run room comp. Yes. Well, it's actually not that far from the truth. Uh, two of them uh, are very intrigued by the sound, and they start talking back to whichever speaker is, is whooping. <laughs> so I have oh, yeah. time to tune my 50 chef. Because <laughs> when I tuned this one, right, like uh, Winston came immediately over. Like, <laughs> it's like, God, I'm be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and with tuning with the 50s and then the theater, that's a lot of swoops, man. The cats yeah. would go insane. The cats would go insane. I mean, they, they, they literally start talking back to it. <laughs> it's just they're stupid but fun. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man, I think that once you set up and tune your theater, it's going to sound insane with the 17s on top. That beam forming technology that they are utilizing in the theater is something else, man. Also, it's another uh, uh, nice thing that uh, I took advantage of uh, apparently, uh, BO headquarters or BO in general, I'm not sure if you can as a dealer, but probably. You can update your 18, 17, 19, 20s to newer software through the theater. Yes, you can only do it through a product health center. I've done it to mine. The weird thing is that, like, when you update the, because the latest software for the WISA transmitters, I mean, mean receivers, Mm -hmm. is not in the service tool. You have to download it from the website, plug it in on a formatted to FAT32 USB, plug it into the back of the BioLab transmitter one, and uh connected to the speakers which i found that it's supposed to update them sequentially well fuck it only did one and i just from there on when i was doing this i would unplug all uh, disconnect all the speakers from the transmitter if there was some plug in one do the process on and it's it's a pain in the penis more or less but with the theater you can actually go to connected speakers and it tells you what software they're on the weird thing is that you say update, it does the update, but the speaker doesn't flash. There's it doesn't no do response. anything. It doesn't do anything. It just stands and I'm looking at my 18s. I'm like, shouldn't you do something like at least, you know, like on, go green or flash a little bit, do some. No, it's the, the, the thing circled the drain for about, I don't know, 50 something odd seconds and then came back, refreshed the page. The speakers have been updated to the latest software. Okay. I'm going to believe you. Yeah. Yeah, no, all my 17s got updated, which is nice. 
because apparently there's also a latency thing with the latest software for theater. So it's uh, I mean, currently, uh, the, initially when the theater went up, uh, we watched like TV and YouTube with just the theater, and the missus was like, "Is this only the theater?" It's like, "Yeah." It's like, "Jesus." <laughs> Shaba, you know what? It, it's fun that you take it as a compliment that you're amused that your neighbors complain at 65, but you know what? A few more movies later, you're going to be like, son of a bitch. Because you are going to be sitting at that 65. It's not more. I sometimes get carried away. I uh, got to say that <clears throat> even with the, uh, like I tuned the speakers, I did not play much. I only think, I only not, I think, I've changed the redirection level by about four or five dBs from the subs, mm -hmm. and I upped the center channel, believe it or not, by one dB. That was it. And the rest I left as it was tuned, and also I changed the distance to the subwoofer because I don't know what the fuck that was measured from. And I must say that I'm very impressed by the default of what the microphone does now. So they have changed something when there was a, a software update to the DSP pro performance, mm -hmm. they have changed how this reads the room. They've improved something. That now it works now. That's all I'm going to say. It works now. Well, the, the microphone was always a close approximation, right? Which is good enough for almost for 90% of people because, I mean, quite honestly, you need a bigger, better microphone to do it even more accurately, but then it's still only approximation. Yes. I mean, and are you really going to put like a $200 microphone in your theater bundle? You'd fucking hope. Well, like with everything, there's a cost to things, right? Like in margins and that sort of thing. Like, But it's the same. It's got to be the same microphone that they had got from the 90s. Because the 50s used the same mic, now it's discontinued. Now you just get an adapter for this thing that it goes from a, the, the three and a half mil jack to an RJ45. Mm -hmm. And But you're still using this. Now, the problem with this that I have is how do you clip this to the microphone stand? I don't think many people have a microphone stand. My problem more is like, how do you move it in space around the, the, the square you want your head to be in? Well, that's where the microphone stand clip question comes in play, doesn't it? Because you would use a microphone stand and you just do it with a boom arm. I guess you can do non-sticky painter's tape. That's what I can ah, That's do. fucking jerry-rig everything, you know what I mean? It works! <laughs> so... <sighs> Lawrence bought a 4,000 too this week. <laughs> Sweet, congratulations. Very, very pretty uh, record players. Mm -hmm. I'm done with the records. My God, it's snowing hard, bro. Some fierce. Tomorrow's going to be fun to go to work, and we got an hour and a half to wait. I mean, if nothing yeah. else, even if you rarely play a record, like these old record players are basically sculptures. Mm -hmm. Like if, if you go to... A lot of the newer record players, like the projects and whatnot, they're sort of like, they're okay to look at, but it's nothing special, right? Like you have to spend 10 grand on one for one to look actually nice without doing anything. Mm -hmm. And B&O was just like, no, it has to be pretty first and then do good stuff. I mean, this is partially- The only thing that I, I honestly wish that there was on the theater that there was either well optical input there should have been an optical input because then you could like you know for people that's let's say have not just a whole bunch of different things but if you have a 9000 you can then run spdif convert it to an optical signal and run it directly into the back of the the theater and have the theater do say hi to megan her her hand was in the mirror. It was a dead giveaway. <laughs> Get yourself the coffee. Yeah, yeah she yeah, drank yeah, the half. The mirror. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, what was I saying? I forget. I was blabbing. Uh, I lost the train of thoughts. <laughs> That's all right. 
but like this is partially why I like uh, the 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 twelve oh two to twelve oh three uh the early two thousands to early three thousands they're just sculptures of record players. I could look at these and not do much with them ever yeah, that's fair. Oh, the nine thousand and yeah, the optical input. There should have been an optical input on the team, on the back of the theater. For what though? Well, because then you're like, let's say for people, because there's been a few cases where we ran a nine thousand to the back of the theater, right? Mm -hmm. But then you're using the DAC from nineteen ninety six that is inside the nine thousand through the aux out of the nine thousand to go into the goofy ass little passive USB. But then you room correct it. <laughs> No, it's not the same, man. Like, but it's I mean, it's period correct sounding. It's not okay, terrible. Okay, put it this way: it's not terrible. But like, I had it hooked up to the Avant through the converter and the power link. I mean, co converter and the and 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 feed the speakers power link. Mm -hmm. And then I had the SPDIF going directly from the nine thousand into the back of the Master Lab ninety. Mm -hmm. When you switch between them. It is two different sounds. Yeah, correct, the, yes. It's unbelievable difference and how much you're missing that is on that CD that gets lost in the in the converse conversions and 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 ups conversions or whatever the travel between the masterlink converter and the avant and the DAC and the avant going back into the nineties through their DACs and it's easier just to feed the chickens direct, man. And that's I wish that they had that uh, option, but they don't. I mean, it does take USB audio, uh, as uh, I think one of the BO deities on uh, mm -hmm. Discord uh, said. It's not just a, a, a line in analog. You can also feed it like full on digital. Yeah, it also charges your phone too. Cool. <laughs> So, yep. I uh, well, we haven't come across many, but we've come across ten, eight instances where we had put that USB C to analog already, and mostly in the Savant systems where the processor, you know, feeds the all the speakers in the ceiling and such. Mm -hmm. But that kind of pre creates a delay issue between the processing internally for BNO and the sound coming out at whatever time it comes out versus to what it comes out of the passive speakers in the ceiling in a, you know, adjacent room that is open concept. And mm -hmm. it's kind of, a, mm. when I have a chat with Mr. Anderson or we, uh, I, we have to figure out how that works and when time and stuff. But one thing I'm for sure going to ask is I was playing around with my moment as it's basically the testing source for everything, right? To see mm -hmm. if it, everything works. One thing that's really weird to me is that it's still so capable, but so unsupported, it's frustrating. Because you know that option where you can use like a Biosound 2 or whatever as the connected speaker to it? Mm -hmm. That works perfectly. And it sees the, uh, everything in your house that is uh, um, multi-roomable, including mm -hmm. the theater <laughs> and the A5. You just can't use it from the moment. But you can in the app. So you can still multi-room to your theater from your moment. You just have to open your fucking phone to do it. That's interesting. And touch to join doesn't work? Uh, I don't think so. I'll have to try that. I would, I would do that. Just hold the freaking center on the wood panel or the silver for like three seconds. See if it'll kick in. I mean, I'll, I'll have to try that some more, but... Uh... I mean, it's it, it's to the point where if I play B and O radio from my uh, Beer Sound Two, the album art and or the radio art still populates on the moment. Hmm. It actually does it quicker than it does through tuning. <laughs> <laughs> so it's sort of like wait, so it is capable yeah. of all this shit. You just I don't know why, like it's dropped to this point. Yeah, I don't know. I wish I really wish they come up with another music system that is committed that has opened up a native support for let's say its title, even built in Spotify app per se. Hey Anders. And obviously Deezer BNO Radio. There should be 
there should be so much more. And I also believe that it should have its own hard drive. I mean, solid state, two, three terabytes that you can, can you can put your DLNA music on. Yeah, it's just and, an SSD at this point, so it doesn't even yeah. make any noise. No. I mean, they use, what, 10 watts, maybe, at full tilt? It's nothing. It's nothing. So that's, that's yeah, those are the things that I wish that they, you know. I mean, part of the reason why I was playing with it, because I was thinking, like, actually, currently, as I have this sort of cabinet on the side wall, and uh, the uh, biogram is going in the middle. But the moment has uh, aux in, uh, like the... Yeah, the RCA line. So I was thinking, well, that's actually kind of cool because I could connect it up that way and then uh, multi-room my records, right? Yes. And then I can have it room correct or I can have it playing on the M3 in the other side of the house, whatever. But then it's like, well, if I do that, it works, but I will always have to grab my phone out of my pocket to do stuff. Which is kind of annoying. <laughs> mm -hmm. I also don't understand the limitation of why there is no co-ability for Bluetooth support for the Bio Remote 1 on the moment if it does connect Bluetooth speakers. Sorry, not Bluetooth speaker, if it can connect Bluetooth to stream to it, correct? Yeah. Why could we not have an in, uh, also Bluetooth support for the for the the moment? I know it's a dead product. It's such a dead topic, and it's a shame. It's a dirty dog shit shame because that would look good with this. Yes, absolutely. It same people that designed it. With it. Yes, and it would look great with it because it's the same aluminum finish, same oak wood. It would just look great. The functionality, obviously, is non-existent for the uh, for the moment, but. I mean, maybe it's my moment, but mine seems to work quite all right. It's just that literally support for it was dropped and it it's losing functionality in the app over time. Have you tried connecting it to the theater as a, you know, have it uh, like a, uh, you know, option two and option zero type of thing scenario where, you know, option two for TV and not zero for the audio master? Uh, Can you play from moment? To the theater? Yes, but through the app. You have to like oh, add it in multi-room on the app. It won't trigger it as its own, like I'm connected to you for speaking. Yeah, as in like it sees all the network links products. So it sees the yeah. A5, it sees the theater. The theater, A5, anything Motart is just not selectable. So in my house, the only things that are selectable are my Beersound 2 and my M3s. Which is fucked up because M3s are ASC platforms. So is the bloody mo mo uh, moment, isn't it? Yeah. But you can share that, but somehow you can't through the products themselves. You have to do it through the app. It's kind of weird. Oh my god! It's a good thing I switched to beer for a moment. <laughs> I mean, so also in the when you literally go to the settings page where you look at uh, your, your network link products, it, it populates. It pop. It says Biosound uh, Theater A5 and all the rest of it. It finds everything on the network. You just can't do anything with certain speakers on the network. Hmm. It's it's weird. But uh, yeah, maybe I can dig it out a, a bit. But it's. I mean, the, the same way that TuneIn is now so dropped from the app that you have to be on the TuneIn website to add new radio stations to it. It's Yeah, I think it's that, that, that whole service is dying out. Which to me, what I don't understand, why was that a driving decision when the moment was cool, where we had the net radio since early 2000s? when it was on the BioLink PC, like that's the same shit. It's, it's been to the Avance, it's been on the BioMaster 5 in the era where it wasn't on the smart TVs. Then the V1 and the, the BioSystem 4 platform came out, which support net radio natively. Well, one Why didn't we I, just stick to it the entire time? I, uh, there is a for sure a difference is that... Uh, I still had in my favorite radio stations a bunch of Dutch stations, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, on TuneIn, they don't work here because region locking. On B&O Radio, they work fine. 
I guess that's full circle to Sun uh, Sundeep's uh, BBC Radio deal, right? Yeah. It's... But yeah, I just uh, it, it's a little bit uh, convoluted how they go back and forth between platforms that are more or less some of them are nonsensical by default of the way or or default of the fact that you had had something that worked perfectly and then you divert somewhere else because you think it's going to be a better experience and it turns out to be a disaster at the end in the long run. Uh, Chavez says, would you see any point in a Mozart moment these days? I would love it. I don't think they will because they will probably argue that most people love using their phone. I hate using my phone for this sort of stuff. So do I. Because almost instantly if I take my phone out, I start doing other things. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know, you pull up Twitter, internet. Oh, let's we like, oh, I put on the song. Actually, now I have it. I can do text messages, WhatsApp, whatever, and it's like, email. And it's like, actually, I just forwent the whole reason of turning music on. No, I, I, I refrain from using the app more or less by the default that I have been using it more all day long at work, or not all day long, but, you know, majority of the installs involves app control and, and and playing with the product and setting it up which is the most boring part of the app because you're not really interfacing with it on any other level other than you know support access control take over the account product update software go through the speakers go through the sources clean up the remote control close it i mean i i, I guess if the if apple ever comes with like a, a chi chargeable uh ipad or mini or something like that they can just make the sound hard and you buy the ipad with it and then uh, there will be some work to do on the, uh, uh, on the on the app side, right? To essentially become what is the moment, and then it's fine because then you keep the rest done. Yeah. Because I mean, there should they could probably make the app in like moments esque, where that's the only thing that pops up, and it just charges on your sound hard, which effectively doesn't do much of anything maybe it has a hard drive in it and it's the charger for your ipad yeah i don't think that they're ever gonna come back with any audio master just because of that maybe if the the narrative and the internal workings of the bno changes and i think it also co-depends on the ceo that's currently running it that maybe there's a guy that's like no fuck that i've come from an audio file whatever something and i always had an audio master we're gonna design and put one on the market Maybe that's just a decision sometimes that it takes to make, right? It, and, and it's just, uh, regardless of how much nonsensical to it, it is to all the other people, if that head uh, decides to make that fucking next level, we're doing it. And, and that's it. And I don't think that would be a bad idea to make something that, uh, you know, even if, if it was something that had a large display on top of the speaker like it's possible to to get away with on a, on a top of the biolab 8 because you know if if cooper mini can put a fucking round display into their gauges i'm sure that bno can stick one on the top of the panel and yeah. give you that give you that entire interface you know like it could be that now i'm not this is too late for that speaker uh i i don't think it would make sense but if they had something that is just a beautiful piece of aluminium and, and, and glass that, that is a screen. Yes, you're coming across problems with the foot fingerprints and so on and so forth, but that's just the nature of the beast. And, and But I think that exactly that point, when you are home, like when I had the moment in my house, <clears throat> I would sit there, sit in front of the 90s, have the Deezer app, whatever, it loaded up in the moment, and it, it's just a, that, that calming notion of just swiping through your songs and knowing that there's nothing else you can fucking do in this thing at all other than turn up the volume i don't want to be called i don't want to start doing emails yeah and things it's not and... it's not something because like even when you're browsing through your music there's a goofy ass notification comes in or you know like i text you and you happen to be on the phone with the app you look at one and you reply now you're not really listening no to you're music trying to anymore. exit out of something and you <clears throat> open the thing that drops down from the That's text right. and it's like god uh, i've had that yeah. so much this week <laughs> So that's one of those things that I'm like, you know what? I, I would prefer to have something committed. You know, if they 
like something like Halo, just bigger, that has a little bit more display real estate on it that you can actually browse. <clears throat> you can use the text input interface in one way or the other and just have, you know, a, a place where no matter what subscription service you have can be unified on that platform and play into everything that you own in the house. <clears throat> That's, right. I think BNO is missing that because there are, there are still high arrest players on the market that are being sold. Absolutely. Right? Quite a lot of them. Sandeep comes with his Hoover to suck the fun out of the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That's pretty slick, whatever that is. Um, but that almost looks B&O-ish in a, in a way to an extent. Yeah, I think this guy sort of redesigns B&O stuff. Mm. So it's a biogram and essentially a, a moment tablet and speakers. But yeah. Yeah, Sandeep, your fresh breath of reality never seems to fail, so it's good. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I personally would like something where you could attach a speaker to or just live on the network link or something mm -hmm. like that. Like, I don't want to do everything through my phone or iPad. I mean, we're already at the point where iPads are essentially just computing devices anyway right but yeah that's, like if my that's phone different. rings my ipad rings and i know you you can undo all that but that's the default setup the same if you get facetimed everything rings it's it's annoying mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah so it's, i mean you know if you like if you if you're not there if you're doing something else if you can't pick up and you just want to mute the ringing like it's no longer enough to just mute your phone because then your, your ipad is still going mm -hmm. it's like in the more of that sort of stuff you have the more uh it keeps ringing and it's like ugh. it's more intrusive and yeah, yeah. it just it, it startles everybody in the family too like if you have all these devices go on it doesn't matter where yeah, I'm not a biggest fan of that technology aspect of it. Like, it's cool to have the phone with you, but it, there's a point of time where, you know, just put it down. Maybe I guess the workaround is to put a Deezer app on my TV and then just browse music through the Deezer account there. Right? Yeah. Can we do that? It's, there's got to be Deezer. I fucking never thought about putting I don't Deezer think on. there's Deezer on LG. I mean, you can check. Let's you can see. let me know. We're, we're there may be for an Apple TV, but I don't think there's. Yeah, there to... is. Okay, it's coming up. Oh, there's us right on. Let's go to apps. I might. I don't know. I never really tried. That's so weird. What the fuck? Go to the apps, bro. Yeah, I, I had a weird quirk. Uh, where, it doesn't go to the apps. Yeah, I that? had the same quirk. You have to go to another app, launch another app, then go to the home screen again. Call this, man. What the... F okay. What? Like, uh, launch Since Netflix when? or whatever. I did, but what? why? I... I I don't know. I had the same. Like, I start I my go up TV to by going thing. to the home screen, and then you press apps, and then for me, it just went to coaxial in every time until I, I started like Disney search. Plus or whatever. I can't search for the apps, bro. Go to apps, call it. See, I can't go to feature, and I can't do shit. What is that? Time to That's bring out it. the LG remote control. I actually have it right by my hand. So you went to coaxial as well. Yeah, it went to the bloody HDMI. <laughs> I've had the what same the weird fuck work. is going on. <laughs> it went to live TV as my recent input. I yeah, me too. That's what I was saying. Me. Coaxial live TV. What in the hell, man? I got around it by uh, logging and into it goes some, back. another app, then going to the home screen. 
Well, that okay, that's messed up. Let's go to Netflix. Yeah. Okay. Let it sign in. Okay. Good. And now you can should be able to go to apps. Go to apps. Okay. Yeah. Now I can see. It's fucking weird. I don't know why this is a thing. (laughs) Why? There is Deezer. You yeah. <laughs> get some teasers. Oh, I need to log in. Call this man. Uh, I can make you really small so people can't see what you're typing. Oh, fuck. You're really tiny now. You're like a little little guy. Little tiny, tiny. Oh god, I gotta agree <laughs> to all kinds of nonsense. What if I agree to it later? <laughs> doesn't let me go. <laughs> you bastard communist. Okay. Yeah, you're literally a oh. micro willy. No, you know what? Screw it. I'll do it later. <laughs> this is nonsense. <laughs> that is so weird. You can't get into the freaking... Uh... Yeah, I know. How does that make sense? I don't know. I I it I don't think it was ever this way before. It's latest update, I think. No, I think yeah, I think they fucked it up in LG side. That makes no sense, bro. I mean, also like like you, I don't have coaxial or live TV in, and it just kept going back to that. And I did it like five times, like you. Like, what the fuck is this? Like, for me, it's it. I just went apps and. It didn't even go to the app thing. It just went straight to live TV, which is nothing for me. Yeah, that's weird. And you know what the sad part is? People that have the theaters like, oh, yeah, it's the B&O. Probably, yeah. That is so weird, bro. But the way to fix it is launch any other app, YouTube, Netflix, Disney, whatever. And... uh. It, and like to the point where like YouTube, you saw that loading bar and then mm-hmm. I pressed the home button. Like it didn't even log in. Right. And then it was fine again. It just did something else. And that was enough. That's so weird. I mean, to me in the, in the app, there's still the bug of connecting a remote control to anything. Like if if in any of the products, if you go to uh, be a remote uh, for that to add, right? And let's say you press it accidentally, you X, X out of it, you go to the whole beginning of the app again. You don't just go back a page. No. That's no, me, that still... is so weird. I, I never because I obviously I don't go to the app thing, right? Like it's just you download all your apps, you're done. How often God do you change you apps? To... How often do you add something? Hardly ever. No, no, I. I guess these are. <laughs> yeah, but most people well, already know what so... they have and know what they like, right? Like. Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't. That's so weird. And I guess if you're doing it from the factory reset, you would know that this is happening. Yeah. I mean. Uh... So far, the only thing I found out that's a pro- well, problem with my panel is, is that it's a European one, so it doesn't have a preset for the American LG App Store. Like, oh. So since the Netherlands doesn't have Hulu, you just cannot download Hulu here. I just get a fire stick or something, which I find that it actually is controllable via CEC. Yeah. And you know what? Okay, that you that brings me to a point with the theater. I think that they've underdesigned it a little bit in a way that there should have been two peripheral and controller sockets. There should have been four puck controllers. But they're banking on CEC. And I think that was a very risky and a shitty decision in, 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 in the long run because I had seen a lot of problems with the CEC we had uh, with the theaters. And it's not necessarily the theater, especially if you go with the Samsung panel or something. It's, it's, it's more of a trouble. And I've had instances where I had see, uh, uh, Apple TV plugged into the theater. I could not control it via CEC. You plug it into the LG panel, it works no problem, but... 
Uh, I've had instances where I was hoping that the guy doesn't add another source because it's uncontrollable at that point. Mm -hmm. And therefore, like a lot of that stuff that we do now, I, I tell, I'll tell also, I tell the guys that like as much as you can plug in everything into the panel and use the theater for the arc input. And if there's a bell box or Illico or Rogers or Shaw or tell us or whatever the fuck, that goes into the theater only and in the app you have to turn off the cec because then the panel will start mysteriously turning on by the default of the theater going back up after you shut it down because it senses signal coming in because the box is never really turned off they just go to like their screensaver mode right with the splash screen of the provider that you're signed in with and then the fucking thing comes back on like call this man so there yeah is a little i, I, th bit I of think a... that's <clears throat> one of the maybe by being no lesser understood regional differences as in like it's coming finally a bit here but the amount of cable boxes and that sort of nonsense you have here is that is so common in it's North America it's staggering everybody has one dude you cannot watch TV without the fucking thing yeah and in most of continental Europe it's not really needed there are other ways to do it with like direct coaxial and just the, the decoder cards and, and that sort of thing. There's no decoder cards. There's no money in decoder cards because they, they sell you these stupid boxes or you rent them for, you know, few pennies on a, on a, on a month basis or dollars, right? Just it's a thousand, it's a, that's my thousand cuts. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so that's, it's a no-go for me. I haven't had a, a TV box for a long time, and it's kind of, you know, it's not that it's unprofessional for me, but I, I should know what they interact like, but I don't because there's so many of them, and I never, I don't have a TV in my house. And quite honestly, even if I had the TV, you just go channel up and down the set, right? Like, you don't, I would never use a Netflix account from an Illico box because the resolution and the picture quality is shite compared to what you can get from a Apple TV if you don't have a smart television or or whatever is in your uh, you know panel. So yeah, I get uh, also the Sunday says that no, they're banking on people using the WebOS apps. Yeah, I understand that, but like there is there's limitations to uh, the apps because they're not all there. Some are some apps that are on Apple you can't get on on uh, on LG and and vice versa, I guess. So there are limitations, but you know, I guess you can put like I have clients that have you know like they use a Google or Amazon Fire Stick or whatever it's called. Yes. So. So yeah, what's this? Are you in North America and would you like a YouTube TV review? What's the YouTube TV review? So YouTube TV is essentially cable TV through YouTube. Interesting. And uh, my uh, internet provider is fully digital as one of the few around here. Mm. So to offer uh, cable TV, they don't actually have any copper in the ground. But they offer TV streaming services, and their prim primary offered is YouTube TV, which goes through the YouTube app, but it's just like, I don't know, ABC, NBC, Fox, you name it. But it's through mm -hmm. the YouTube uh, app on your TV. And, Interesting. Uh, I'm considering it because... I haven't watched TV and I haven't missed it, but now we have a, a whole set. Of, sometimes I'm just like, I just want to watch something dumb, like zone out and not do anything, right? Yeah. And then since well, we don't really have that, like either it's YouTube, which is worse than TV at the moment because there's so many goddamn ads in on YouTube at the moment. Get a premium account, bitch. The fuck, man? 12 bucks a month. That's all I have. I, I don't have I, the... I'm I'm 90 sure, but I'm not entirely sure that that's included in the YouTube TV thing. Mm. But anyway, I'll I'll figure it out. But uh, I mean, I I don't mind supporting creators with watching ads, right? Like, it's not that I mind that. It's just that certain channels have a, a commercial now on a 
15 minute video every two minutes. Like it's become oh, ag Christ. aggressive. It's become insane. <laughs> like I can live with like a commercial every five to eight minutes or something. Fine. Whatever. If it's the 30 second click away, five second click away, whatever. It's fine. Mm -hmm. But uh, like two, three months ago, YouTube essentially decided we don't make enough money. So we're going to ban everybody with an ad blocker. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I heard about that. And also uh, triple the ad. Fuck. To push you to the YouTube subscription, basically. Yeah. I've had YouTube subscription for years now. I don't regret it at all, quite honestly. And that's my only it was form of entertainment, really. Other than, like, you know, occasional Amazon movie. But I also have an issue with streaming services. Because if you look at... Uh, let's just call them blu-ray quality movies like mm -hmm. from a hard media compared to what you have as <clears throat> one to one 4k hdr net for netflix stream they're completely two different picture qualities oh absolutely it's not the same and acoustics or acoustically as well they are completely different so why am I paying all this money when you're telling me it's freaking, you know, 4K and then I look at the info thing and it says like 720p or 1280p or whatever. It's not full 4K stream. So, yeah, I have an issue with that. But so, uh, yeah, that's, that's what just, it is. But anyway, it's, sometimes you just, I don't know, you just want to watch something silly but the problem is when you want to watch something mindless which is tv is excellent for like when you have all these streaming services you, you spend half the time deciding what mindless thing you want to actually watch right? okay i'll give you a very good suggestion for mindless tv beaver dam removals bro <laughs> okay it's fucking great. It's like 20 minute video of a dude with the rake trying to break up a dam. And then it finally, like, you can hear it. If you're doing shit, you can see her water. And then it just speeds up the water. And then you're like, whoa, bro, he's making progress. And yeah, it's like a, an <laughs> hour video. Such a Canadian thing. Beaver dam. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought of it that way. But yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that I watch a lot now for some reason. I find it uh, very relaxing. I mean, that's almost me like saying uh, Python trapping. <laughs> I mean that's a very Florida thing. Yeah, Beaver Dam removal is much fun, much more fun. It's much more. Yeah, it's just you know you listen to the the babbling brook go to a full range torrent after the dude pulls enough wood and sticks and mud out of it. I mean, speaking uh, of nonsensical great. thing, I saw uh, recently they caught another python and it was like seven and a half meters long. Damn. Yeah, like, it, it was one of these up, boys, but... right? Like where you could literally hold it like that. Yeah, no, I'd rather go pull wood out of the water. <laughs> well, beavers are no joke, man. <laughs> no, they're not. They're actually not. But uh, it's uh, it's fun to see the, the, the removal. So, yeah, that's my mindless TV as far as that goes. It took a while to find it, too. So, yeah, you know, watch this, watch that. And... I mean, uh, yeah, YouTube TV has a million add-ons. I know, but I just... Like, even the basic package is like 120 channels. Mm. It has like Comedy Central and uh, the the like the Family Guy. That's sometimes it's nice to have like just the, the the Fox Entertainment. Just turn on Family Guy, American Dad, that, that sort of thing. Where you like every so often you're not really paying attention, but then every so often you go, "Ha ha, that's a funny joke." <laughs> mm. That sort of thing, right? I mean, I think there's a Golf Channel uh, because occasionally some. Like slumbering Sunday, Just turn on some golf and have a nap. Yeah, man. Can you give me one second? Yeah, go for it. I get somebody knocking on my door. One second. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking of uh, getting some uh, cable through YouTube TV, and uh, just wondering how it goes. Uh, essentially, like, is is there like buffering? How much network does it use? Like, are we talking like the, the full on sort of when Netflix, I mean, Netflix 4K says you need minimum 25 down. But when you look at your sort of network analytics, 
there are for sure times where it goes to about 75 down for like full HDR uh, Atmos content. Like it doesn't stay at 75, but it for sure does. So uh, I, I'm kind of wondering also, according to YouTube, I think they said it's 5.1 for the channels that offer it. But the YouTube app on webOS, I'm not sure does. So I'll probably also install it on my Apple TV and see what that does. Who knows? Maybe the interface is annoying. I, I wonder how the Bio Remote One will work with like just page up and down, that sort of thing. Uh, I wonder if once logged in, if you could actually set it as a separate source from your regular YouTube. Like I've never done this before. I always used to have cable. And in our last apartment, cable was included in the, the monthly cost. So it was just plug in and go. It was, it was easy. So uh, like and subscribe and all that jazz. <laughs> I'll, I'll bring it uh, whenever I have a chance, probably next week somewhere. I also have to like uh, my ubiquity stuff came. So I, I'll have to unpack that uh, probably today somewhere. I have to pull some uh, ethernet cables out of the, the wall to route it because the ubiquity stuff is going to, live in another cabinet uh, and then wire that stuff up. Uh, initially, I don't really care about the cameras. They will go up at some point, but just have to the network work. Are you making too much noise again? You're muted still. Or did you turn off your headphones? <laughs> I, I can't hear you. <laughs> what did he do now did they die boomer tech over here still can't hear you <laughs> can't hear you at all Uh, Sandeep, to uh, to answer your question, is your theater 5017 uh, all set up now? Uh, as, everything's in place. Everything is wired for, etc. Uh, it's just that I haven't had time yet to uh, tune the 50s for room compensation. I mean, they work. I know they work. And when you go to the boinging menu of the theater, everything is boinging correctly. But... Uh, the master used to be on the left and is now on the right, uh, and the old uh, tuning is still in there, which I have to remove. And but, like I said earlier, the, the cats start meowing once it starts whooping. Yeah, you gotta lock them out somewhere. Can you hear me now? Oh, yeah. I can hear you now. Jesus. Yeah, my battery died coincidentally. Ah, oh. <laughs> that's what it was. So I guess it can take like seven podcasts before it goes. <laughs> forgot all about it anyway somebody got locked out of their freaking unit so i went in oh that's right it. you're responsible the, for that man I'm, I'm the key master so uh one thing that i was gonna touch base on before we go is uh i uh, forget the guy that did that the, the bash review from uh, england yeah regarding the theater and the beta software and then he decided that he signed an nda but fuck it or something yeah, yeah, yeah. And that he didn't really say nothing about anything. But uh, I don't know. I found it a little like, you know, we're fucking harsh every now and then. But that was bashful as hell in, in, in certain ways. And, you know, yes, if you sign into a beta software, you need to understand that there's going to be st st stuff that's not going to work. Yeah, on the BNO side, maybe they should have been more responsive to it because we both agree that, you know, like there, it's not the best. It's better now, I guess, than it's yeah, ever Yeah, comms is not their strong suit, no. No, but it's also, you know, I guess for us, it comes with a huge understanding. But, you know, for him to say that, like, people that buy the systems are either the ones that are, you know, diehard fans or somebody that just puts it in the in their house and never looks at it or whatever, right? Like in their in their, you know, 
third and fourth residents and so forth. Uh, I, you know, for a guy that has a Ferrari as well, you know, like, bro, like you're treading the wrong path here, in my opinion. And it's not entirely wrong, but there is some people in between that. <laughs> well, there, I think there's a lot more people in between that than than meets the eye, in my opinion, right? So that that oh, oh yeah, just... the average user is not vocal about anything uh, regarding B and O. It's just it no. sits there and it does its thing. And if it does go wrong, then usually it's somebody that comes in and put. Uh, the, you know, it's us. It's a service call because if you buy in a system of that kind, you buy in. You know, it comes with the service. Yeah, but the amount Same of BB sevens, tens, elevens, and stuff still around that will yeah. sit around with eight thousands for another five years. Like once it works, what is there to do? Exactly. So, I mean, to me, it's. I initially, I think I misunderstood this, the first video, because I watched it, and I was thinking, like, the beta app, like, uh, like the toggles, right? Not the actual beta-beta mm -hmm. thing, which is another communication issue, I think. Yes. <laughs> because you're, the, the beta thing I was thinking about, he was talking about, I kind of agree with. It's weird, and they don't tell you much of anything, but he's actually talking about more so the alpha program that you have to sign up for. Mm -hmm. But it's also called beta, so you never know what you're talking about. <laughs> no, I just found, like, uh, you know, we used to be in, and, and every now and then get a little bit harsh about the stuff, but uh, I think he was a little, you know, over the threshold of crossing the, the line in certain certain ways. Well, I, I don't want to be... And he's bitching and he's got a gray melange cover. Bro, come on. You know what I'm saying? It's, I don't even think it's that, quite honestly. Be that as it may, that may be a choice. But I think half our bitching is not on our behalf. And Fair. that's kind of where the difference is. Yeah. Because, like, for all the, the 60 people watching right now, right? Like, I, I want your stuff to work fine. If mine works less optimal than yours, I can take that. Same here. I'd rather have clients work than mine not, or than, than mine, you know? Yeah. So, and I mean, and we're quite, fo and I talk to people, so I'm, I'm, I guess, more in the know, and, but that, kind of, that's the problem, right? Like, you shouldn't have to do what we do to sort of get a sense of where it's going. Yes. <laughs> that's kind of my whole issue with it like the same with the marketing and the advertising and all that sort of stuff like i understand it better than most because of excessive time and effort into this <laughs> and speaking to people within the co company but if you're i don't know your average maybe not even average if you're sort of your passive youtube watcher with a, a sort of like, ooh, I like B&O. Like, are you going to spend hours to get to know these people? Like, shouldn't the marketing just be sufficient? Yeah. <laughs> Same for the communications. It's, uh, yeah. So, I, like I said, I don't necessarily disagree with them, but it's it's... It's a bit of, like, why aren't you catering to me? which is mm -hmm. never really us, I don't feel. Like, I could be wrong. Like, if tell, tell us, please, if we're sitting here bitching, like... <clears throat> There's nobody's business. <laughs> <laughs> but part of the reason, uh, like, I would like to talk to Mr. Anderson about the app, right? Because I feel confused of where the app is going. So I'm pretty sure half of you are confused of what's going on. And the other half is probably sort of like, whatever, I don't care, or I'm not updating. Mm -hmm. Fine, but like, it's, it's. Well, the perfect example for that essentially was on, I was on Saturday, I was at shop and, you know, I was digging into that BLF 19 downstairs in a, in a service room and Kareem pulls me out and I'm like, dude, like, how the fuck do you know edit the stations on my favorites buttons on a, you know this new app? I'm like, you just gotta hold it, and you have to hold it like for five seconds, man. Like, you know, and all of a sudden, poof, it shows up, and it's like, I have a Mozart oh, mom, product. Bro. 
where that is the case. This, because the theater <laughs> is still on a different way of functioning, mm-hmm. which is also gonna, uh, I'm gonna ask, like, is are we actually gonna unify things? Yeah, because like, why is it three dots to go to the settings on the Mo- on the Mozart on the theater, but this one has settings as a bottom last tab that you have to go into. So also, I just. I, uh, in this, in 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 the uh, in the app, right? Like one of the first things is software update. Then you go to the settings, and one of the first things again is software update. Why is it there twice? Just also, sure. why is software update more important than sound settings, or equally as important? Like I don't understand. Right. Like should software you not just be not be worried about, about? Especially yeah, once that... it's by default on. I think software update should be placed under or above the about tab on the bottom of the <laughs> yes. scroll screen. That's Especially it if it's be. by default on, right? Like, what do you care? But again, yeah, like, I, I could talk to Mr. Anderson privately off record or just on the record, but like, I, I want to share this with people who are interested because it's like, it's confusing to me. Like, what are we doing? Also the, I'm on test flight for the app and the different uh, versions are like stuff gets added in, pulled back, and it's sort of like, are are we just trying shit, or like is there yeah. a vision? Yeah, and that's the risky business of it. Like, how much of this actually will stick at some point? And, and... I mean, I, I'm pretty sure there's a vision. It's just not very clear from the outside what it is, and nobody tells you anything. No. And I also think I. Like another thing I want to know is like, how did we ever get to the decision that essentially, yeah, fuck the old app, how it was. We're just going to totally change it and screw it. Yeah, I don't understand where the logic behind that is. Uh... I mean, I understand if that lived in test flight for a while, right? But if you, if you bought your theater, I don't know, six months ago, and then you're doing your thing or you're... I don't know, your balance. And then three months in, all of a sudden, all the controls of how you normally use it other than the physical ones are different. It's kind of like, wait, what? (laughs) What are we doing? This is weird. Yeah, I'm not a The problem then is, what are we doing is, we're not saying anything. (laughs) To me, that's the biggest thing that that we just. you know, you got to find out the hard way. And that's... Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'll be asking questions that are not meant for the, the app slash software department because it would be weird to have engineers be in charge of communications. <laughs> because then you get like these Jeff answers, <laughs> right? Like... When is Atmos coming? And it's like, well, what is Atmos exactly? And it's like, <laughs> it yeah, gets more yeah. and more Somebody confusing. needs to translate that to dumb, right? Like, that's <laughs> basically what it is. Yes. But I still think that they should uh, at least put, like, the release notes, like, put it on a splash page that you have to at least scroll through it and then click OK to get away, get rid of it, like, Yes, we changed the way that the My buttons are now saved. Press and hold on individual or selected My button for three seconds to edit it. Instead of, you know, we took that little ladder thing, whatever, those three dashes from the side. Quite literally, it was that you told me last week that I knew how it worked on this thing. Mm -hmm. Because I was, uh, I initially went, as as always, to the settings and it's like, oh yeah, it's the press and hold thing. Because I'm so not used to that. And we live with this stuff more than others, I would say, when yeah. it comes to playing with it and, and, and trial and error and so on and so forth. So so it's, it's one but, of these things. The same, I don't know whether it's an app bug or not, but quite often when I start playing this, I don't change the sound modes, right? Like, it's always the same, but quite often mm-hmm. it's not in optimal. It just says sound mode none, which is sort of like, How? Like, is this a I've bug of misreporting, that, or? I've seen that in the, where the heck did I've seen that? Uh, in the A5, I've seen it in a few instances where the sound mode is none, 
and I can't think of uh, Emerge. <coughs> that also came sometimes in sound mode, none. I don't understand it because my Emerge has the new 3. interface. 3. Point whatever. 3.2.3.2 software, yeah. But yeah. my Emerge is uh, is in the new standard of the app, as you can see. Yeah. And yeah. Wait, the software update is on the top, right? On the settings there. Yes. <laughs> Which Let's is like, again. why? Why is that the most important thing? <laughs> yeah, it's name, it's name, software update, and sound. It should be sound, name, software update, and settings. I mean, the software update can just disappear or into settings update, because it's in settings too. That's not the point, that they should just remove that because, yes, it is under software update again under that. So <laughs> it makes no sense. What was the other thing that I was going to mention? I forget now with the theater. Uh, I forget. But it, uh, yeah, they should definitely change or, or unify this in some sort of a way. Because right now it's not really, uh, it's not that logical. Yeah. It's not that logical. I mean, uh, I, I also kind of for reference in terms of where to, if we ever have anger, right, <laughs> about certain mm -hmm. things. I kind of want to know, like, how, how is that... Uh, a uh, combination of uh, software app related versus product related. And uh, these teams must work hand in hand, but are they fully separate or is it a meeting about a meeting to, to discuss things or is a lot of the app team, just the software team for the product side? Is that why we mm -hmm. sometimes get weird issues that like if you're an app developer, you would never think about and then all of a sudden your uh, Dolby Digital is messed up or your PCM or whatever, right? Yes. It's so weird. Why did it go so bright in here all of a sudden? Because you showed your screen. <laughs> oh, dumbass. Uh, can I do that and tone it down? Yeah. Uh, this is better, much oh, better. There you go. Yeah, that was so weird. But yeah, that's, you know, there are a couple of things that bug me about that, uh, the interface. But they should definitely, well, they're working on it. So I can't really say, bah, right? They're working on it. And that's it. But yeah, I just also, another thing, something simple I want to, what's the time frame before it's like this no longer feels like beta and it's tweaking? <clears throat> I mean, one of the app features I still want. Uh, for the theater, which still hasn't come in like a year, is like, I would like the signal info on the front page. And I think most theater owners want that. Like yeah. just because ever since we've gotten Atmos, <laughs> there is a reason to actually check if the right signal is coming in. Mm -hmm. Like, is this because... Um, the true image algorithm is so good that with a 2.0 PCM signal, it can sound quite surroundy, right? Mm -hmm. And with the dumber TVs, dumber, like Eclipse and Harmonies and whatever, it was sort of like, well, it doesn't do Atmos, who cares? But now it actually matters. And if you are uh, are getting what you paid for in all those speakers you have around me, like in my case, or uh, if you have any sort of height speakers or... It's just, I found myself being much more interested in knowing what sort of codec is being played than ever before. Yeah, I, I'm with you on that and it really depends on, you know, like sometimes I'm thinking like, should I just make another listening position for the streaming service per se? Yeah. Right? So. Well, it's also just but, a, a quick check of like, what am I hearing? Am I hearing, mm -hmm. what, am I hearing true image? Am I hearing... Dolby Digital, is it Atmos? I think you're always hearing true image at the end of the day, realistically speaking. It's just how many channels are going into the bloody thing. What is yeah. it being fed is really the question at the end of the day. But I don't know. To conclude this podcast, these are fucking amazing speakers, bro. Bye, Biolabates. Don't be a bitch. 
everybody buy them. Uh, yeah. Bang and & Olsen, uh, their horse has them in stock now. He, he all of a sudden got a bunch. <laughs> yeah, so we got two in stock as well for the for the the A5 in spaced aluminium. It's, so heavier, far, the it's heavier than you think it's it, it's going to be, yeah. but it doesn't fall over, which is like a big pro. Which is irony to the level. <laughs> yes. Because it can't stay at up level. Like I, I have one of these outdoor tables that's metal, and it's like it flexes a bit, right? Like, and mm -hmm. I have no problem putting this on there. I would with a level because it's for sure gonna tip itself over at some point. Yeah. And uh, no, the A five is a solid product, and Lab Eight, man, kudos to B and O for finally coming up with something smaller than uh, a towering pair of eighteens that would be the smallest speaker you could buy. Very well done very happy with them and uh yeah i'm just uh my my biggest curiosity now is how much am i gonna have to slit my wrists for the walnut grills or lamellas rather or wood covers for them just sell a kidney it's... it'll be fine fudge <laughs> sticks man i mean so... sell the bad one <laughs> sell the bad one <laughs> But yeah, well, there, eventually if I get time thing. for it, I'll make a video on this uh, because it's really rather good. I really like it. Mm. No, BNO is on the right track with products more than ever, in my opinion. Now, especially the theater, I think it's the best product of the decade, and I think that the la the lab eights are going to stick around for at least another decade because they are really good. Oh, as a closer, as as uh, I'm on the same train, I think, as KCBR. Do you think it's worth upgrading uh, 17s to 8s if they're not your main speaker? Mm, for, like, the surround and stuff? Something like that. Let's say you have a theater with 18s or a theater with 50s, 20s, 28s, and I you have, like, 17s in the back or something like that. I wouldn't replace the 17s. I would find another space for them within that setup because more the merrier but if i were to trade them i would probably go with the lab eights over the 17s it's not as bass responsive but being it connected to the theater and the acoustical clarity from the 80 uh, eights to the 17s is noticeable noticeable so but again, if it's something for your reader channels that you already have and you're trying to swap them, I think it's more or less a – it's not that it's a waste of money because buying b and is never a waste of money because the product will always appreciate in value. But if I were to do that, I would probably consider those speakers to be part of a different room. Your height or something like that. That's what I would do. Like I, uh, That's the only thing I, mean, I would do. I mean, it's a sharp investment for not – like mm. a night and day change, I guess. And also, like, I mean, for me, the 17s are on the ceiling, and that's just yes. nigh on impossible with eights. It's going to look weird. It's going to look weird. That's definitely it. It's what it is. But uh, they, yeah, Sanders, they, you're right. They do kick the 17s ass. I just wasn't going to be that blunt about it. But I uh, don't want to feel, you know, don't want to make Mikey feel bad about a 17. I'm not. <laughs> I, I know you're not, but it's just they are They are definitely, well, obviously, and then in my opinion, they should be. For the price, first of all, well, with the, 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 the worth of money and whatnot, but think, also with the advancement of technology. They are definitely a, there. Depending on what you have it connected to, the 17s become different <clears throat> animals. 17s yes. with a theater are quite different than 17s with a harmony. It's, 100%. It's, it's not the same. And you add in a lot of the, through the uh, theater, you add in a lot of the features that the motor platform in general gives any sort of speaker. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not saying they're on par, but 17s are easier to hang, get away with spatially, visually. Well, definitely right now on the wall brackets because there isn't any for the lab eights. Yeah. But, uh, Lawrence, you're going to be pleasantly surprised how good they sound. But uh, if you're going to pair them to the TV, don't pair them stereo between themselves unless you just want to listen to them. But then separate the pair before you wise them because they will not work man it's just I, I understand that they say that it would 
I've uh, asked for the latest software because I know that I've done it before with the BLAP 28s to a, at a client's place. But I think we're like on 2.3. something for software yeah. on those on the Mozart platform. And it worked. And, but now it doesn't. It just pairs one and that's it. Also, on the last note, I guess, when yesterday playing with a TV and uh, or a theater and pairing the speakers, I did use a WISA receiver or BLAB receiver one for the BLAB 11. Mm-hmm. And it does re- recognize it as a receiver one, which is cool. And then it gives you a drop down menu and, tell, and asks you what's, uh, uh, what, it, it asks you what compatible speaker do you have with, uh, with your receiver. Well, that's an improvement because before yeah, I just and got then it just stuck it. And then it comes up. I don't know if you can see yeah. it. And then it's a CB Lab 11. Yeah, and it's R1. R1, receiver one. Receiver one. So it's identified as uh, still as a wise speaker. So yeah, good job on that. Finally works. And uh, yeah, listen, we're 10 minutes over, which means that's 10 more minutes that I could have been listening to these speakers. So <laughs> piss off. <laughs> All right, everybody. Uh, piss off. <laughs> I need, I need got eight live eights to listen to. Ta-da, next. <laughs> Bye, so, everybody. See you next week. Have a good see one. See you next week. Take Bye. care. Bye.